Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and today we're going to be building a Gaslands team. Alright, for those of you that have been subscribed this whole time and following along with all of our Gaslands content, basically I've decided to do a playlist where I tackle a team for each of the sponsors in the game. So. I've discovered a blog by Glenn Ford, the game designer of Gaslands, and he has recommended various builds for various sponsors, basically to optimize them for the death race scenario. And uh, Adam and I have not used any sponsors yet in our games of Gaslands, and I'm hoping we'll be doing that in the future. But since I recently came in to a large pile of Hot Wheels cars, I've decided to make a team for every sponsor, uh, based on Glenn Ford's suggestions. Since, like I say, we haven't played with sponsors, I don't know how they work, I don't, I wouldn't know how to optimize them. But this way we can get a feel for what each sponsor does, what each sponsor's good at, based on what the designer of the game had originally intended. So that's the, that's the name of uh, the game, that's, that's what we're doing in this series. So last week, or last week, last time we did a slime crew. Today we're doing Mishkin, the mad scientist, so um, I guess I don't need to blabber on forever. Let's get into building and painting a Mishkin team. So the recommended loadout for the Mishkin team is a gyrocopter. Now this will be given the magnetic jammer, the oil slick, cal drops, glue dropper, smoke, and mines upgrade as well as the rapid fire perk. Now I have this old, uh, well I shouldn't say old, but I have this piece of crap dollar store helicopter here, uh, which is about the same size as a Hot Wheels car, so you know, it's kind of the same scale, but I would imagine a helicopter, even in the same scale, would be much larger than a car. So I don't think this is quite good enough to be used as the helicopter, plus as you can see here, it's a cheap piece of crap and it's already broke. So I think I'm just gonna shrink the tail end of it, since it's already broken off anyway and use this as my gyrocopter. Now, mines, smoke, oil slick, all that stuff. Um, like I say, I like to play these things wissy-wig, but I think a lot of that stuff wouldn't really show very much, um, except for a few items, obviously, and I gotta modify this thing a little bit. I can't just have it straight out the box. So, I have this tank here. I think it's from a Space Marine Devastator unit, maybe from the Multi Melta or the Heavy Grav cannon or whatever it's called that'll be my oil um, and then these again from the devastator sprue for space marines 40k uh, just some random missiles which I'm probably just gonna stick somewhere on it and make it look like you can drop some bombs on people the next vehicle recommended is a car with a thumper and grenades now it took me a bit of Google searching to figure out exactly what a thumper is because it's not really clear exactly what it is, but most people seem to be using a sonic weapon of some kind to represent it, like a loudspeaker or something along those lines. So I've got here this searchlight from the old Imperial Guard sprue, and uh, even though it's supposed to be a light, I think it looks very much like a speaker. And I'm gonna probably mount it on the top here, because I understand from after reading through a few forums that it is actually a 360 arc on that guy. So just simple plop speaker on the top of the car and he is good to go. Again, grenades don't have to be shown because they're thrown by the drivers, passengers and such, as far as my understanding. And finally, in this list that we're going to build, recommended on the blog, um, I got a buggy and we're going to give him the kinetic super booster, molotovs and rocket thrusters. Now I've got these two like sort of jump pack, jet pack looking thrusters from uh, my Wild West Exodus gang um, and obviously they're extra pieces left over because you can assemble them two different ways so it's pretty cool because I got these excellent thrusters and they're gonna look absolutely amazing at this scale and then I couldn't really figure out what a kinetic super booster is looking at a lot of the accessory kits people are coming out with and stuff like that um, it appears to just be some kind of weird energy weapon so um, I've decided I've found this in my bits box. It's from the Torox sprue, I believe, uh, for the Imperial Guard Torox. 
and it looks basically like an energy weapon. Um, and even if I wanted to, I could use this maybe in the future as an arc lightning projector or whatever. Again, you can kind of imagine this stuff however you want it. And uh, so basically, I think I'm just going to mount that in this weird little donut that's on top of this car. Can you guys see that on the buggy? This weird little donut. I don't know what that's about, but uh, it definitely looks weird. And so I'm just going to put this right in the middle of it and it'll look like it's actually supposed to be a mount for the weapon. And that's my plan of attack, guys. So uh, basically, I guess I am just going to start putting these together. So let's do that. On the garbage on display for your celebration day. I'm the black twin. Cool. So now that all my weapons are on, I just want to add some things just to dress them up a bit, just to make them look a little more aggressive. Maybe just personalize them a little bit. And uh, one thing I've seen used many times on Instagram that I feel needs to be mentioned here is just some simple toothpicks. So you can just take these guys and actually start chopping them to bits, specifically the spiked side of them. Uh, where the hell did my clippers go? Oh, well, I'll just use a knife. So I'm going to find the spike here just on the tip and just chop it off. And then I'm going to use this to go around these guys, especially like this muscle car and stuff, and just kind of add like some random spikes and stuff, just to make them look a little cooler so it's not just a straight car. Sorry, I pulled it out of the camera there. Just not just a straight car with like a speaker on the top of it. I want it to look a little more personalized and a little more custom. Well, I hope that you'll enjoy it. This show I pull on for you. So stop you. I still have tons of this foil thing left that I've used in past tutorials. And I'm basically just going to cut out pieces that are big enough to cover these windows. Maybe another one just to cover the hood and like add some personality to it. Um, yeah, so anyway, the great thing about these... Now, for those who didn't watch the last video, I should say, uh, this is from the top of a coffee tin when you take the plastic lid off and you have to peel that layer of foil off the top. That's basically what this is. And luckily it's all covered in all these little squares, uh, which are all when, which are almost... What's the word I'm looking for? Elevated from the surface so that they look kind of like studs or whatever. I think this makes for wicked good sheet metal looking armor. Uh, on the Gaslands cars. So I'm just going to kind of figure out like the size. So this window's two of these squares high by let's say six of the squares wide, but at the top you're only looking at three. Perfect. Nope. Four. Okay. So Two by four all the way out to six. Cut the two here. And there you go. There's my two window covers. Look just like armor. So I'm going to spend some time gluing them on. And I'm probably going to add very similar details like that to the other vehicles. So. Um, once again, it's not rocket science, I've sort of shown you how to do it, and so now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish decorating all these cars. glue is set I got some black primer on there now I think because Mishkin is a mad scientist I have to decide what main color I want to paint these because I'm, I'm painting each of the teams all one solid color so that it differentiates and you can tell which team is which so I think purple is gonna be appropriate for mad scientist I like that idea so let's start with that I've got here heavy violet Vallejo game color and I'm just gonna paint pretty much everywhere with this well, so once the purple is set I'm gonna paint all of the metal details or what I want to be exposed metal with some uh, Vallejo chainmail silver one two three four Once 
once the silver's dry, we're just gonna hit it with a good old fashioned coat of null oil. Sweet, now that my wash is dry, I'm just gonna finish these guys off with a little bit of sponge painting and then we can just do the details and we're pretty much done. The point of this is I'm trying to show you guys how to quickly and easily build a Gaslands team. Basically yesterday I spent the day assembling and painting up to here. Of course I had to let the wash dry pretty much overnight, so here I am the next day on the Sunday morning with a sponge brush. I'm just gonna do a little bit of sponge painting. Now I've chosen to use this brush as opposed to just a random piece of foam, mainly because it already has this nice bevel on it. And I'm gonna need that point to be able to get very specific areas. However, I'm not gonna use the whole brush, obviously. I just wanna tear off the point. And uh, I'll use the rest for another sponge painting exercise that doesn't have to be as uh, accurate. So, the Last video we did, my cars were basically naked metal, so I didn't have to do a silver layer with the sponge, but because this is wanting to show chipped paint, it is purple paint, uh, I'm still going to throw in a little bit more of this silver. And that's why when I was painting the silver on the other parts of the vehicle too, I wasn't too worried about getting a little bit onto the purple or a little bit where I didn't want it because I'm going to add a whole bunch more damage here. And we're going to, of course, be adding the rust and all this, that kind of stuff like we did last time. And my silver's running pretty low. I'm going to see if I can squeeze out a little bit here. Just enough to sponge paint what we need. Don't need too much. Yeah, good enough. I'm going to buy a new silver. So in this case, because they're painted, I'm not just like haphazardly throwing it everywhere. I want to use the edge of this sponge and just very pinpointed spots like I say along oh I fucked that up right away so you want to use your <laughs> paper towel <laughs> to get most of the stuff out of the sponge so that way when you do use it there you go it doesn't look like big paint globs it actually looks like chipped away paint dab it out now I'm just gonna hit this ridge here just to sort of show you guys ridge there there we go a little bit along the front, boom, just like that. So you can still see the purple, it just looks like it's chipped off in places. And uh, more or less I want to stick to, again, around the wheel wells, I want to stick to any raised areas, um, like I say, like that little ridge there on the front. And basically anywhere you just kind of feel like should be chipped off. And it's literally that easy, I mean, I'm just dabbing it out on the paper towel so that there's not as much on the sponge, and just randomly hitting it. And without speeding it up, I'm just going to show you guys how easy it is. Because that is that whole car done. I'll give thanks to the failures that brought me here. So the next color I like to use for rust effects is Doom Bowl Brown. If I can get you there, you go. Doom Bowl Brown. <laughs> you can basically get away with using the same sponge. I just want to make sure that I don't mix too much silver into it, but it's okay if I do, because once again, these are not going to be clear-cut lines, right guys? Like, this is going to be rust that has slowly accumulated. So again, just using the tips of my brush, I want to basically hit the areas I've hit with silver, but less so, so I don't cover up the silver I've already done. And just like that, if you can see what I'm doing here, boom, boom, boom. Right, so be a little bit along the roof since most of this is already metal. I like things to be rusted and weathered. There we go. I mean, that's pretty much what Gaslands is, right, guys? Like, it's pretty much an exercise in weathering. There you go, I got two thirds of that car in like what, a minute or less? Um, so I'm basically just going to keep going on the other cars, oh, a little too much there, dab that out a bit, perfect, nice, yeah, especially this me these metal parts I want to get a lot of rust because I don't want them to really look all that nice bright silver, 
And it doesn't hurt to put a little on the hubcaps as well, even a little bit underneath if you really need to. Boom. Especially along the back, the front, around the wheel wells, those are the important areas, those are the areas we really want to look rusted, because those are the first areas that go on a car. First areas that rust, I should say. And there you go, that's that. Now I'm gonna do the other two. And I'm sailing to the moon. All right, and the final color for rust, I'm gonna use the Troll Slayer Orange. And once again, I don't care if there's still a little bit of paint left in my sponge because it's all right if these colors mix a little bit on the actual model itself. Because once again, it's not a clear cut line, right? Like it's a slow fading from one color to another. But I don't want it too dark either. I don't want too much of the Doom Bull coming through, which it appears to be there. I want more of the orange to show. But again, it's okay if there's a little bit of the red and a little bit of the silver showing through. Not the end of the world. And more or less, just like last time, I'm going to basically try and hit all the areas I hit with red, but much less. Just like that. Boom. 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 Yeah. A little bit there. A little bit there. 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 On the back. Boom. boom, boom. And on the gun, because I put a little bit of red on the gun already. And there you go. Stupid easy, right? Sweet, now that my main color is done and the rust is on there, I'm just going to spend some time now and paint the details. So basically, just like I did in the last video, I like my windows blue. Other people like to use other colors, but, you know, it's either you use a color or you use a metallic, really, because you want it to either be reflective or not. We're going to try and do a color fade with a little bit of glossiness at the end. So, if you guys saw the last video, you know exactly what I'm going to be doing next, but in this video, I'm going to start with a Cantor Blue. I'm going to paint all of the windows as well as the front lights in the Cantor Blue. So let's do it. They must have had a terrible day There's no need to wish cause they stop listening to this place So with the intention of painting the rear lights red, of course I'm going to start with a Doom Bowl Brown because that's the base I always use for red. So uh, yeah, basically just painting the rear lights and I guess it's only on the cars, there's not really any on the, on the gyrocopter, so let's do it. <laughs> give these windows a kind of glare or I guess a lighting effects for lack of a better word uh, and for that I'm just gonna basically build up to lighter shades of blue so here I've got the Cantar blue and then I've got a little bit what's this one called now Keldor sky what used to be enchanted blue and uh, basically just mix the two a nice 50 50 that's gonna give me one grade one gradient and just pay attention to how the light reflects off the windows naturally and just kind of follow that. So with this one, I kind of want to, yeah, I want to focus more towards the top and you want to kind of go on like a curved angle, I guess. Is that the best way to put it? It's kind of a curve and only paint the one half on an angle like that, the lighter color. And we're just gonna keep building up from there. Same thing on this guy. Same angle, do that and kind of curve down. If you guys can see that, hopefully you can see that clearly enough. The color difference is so minor that you may not be able to see it that clearly, but you can see where my brush is going so you get the idea, right guys? Can you see that on camera? The difference between the two colors? Yeah, there you go. Cool. The helicopter is going to be a little bit harder because it's got basically this like multi-faceted window so I think I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing though and keep the same angle going as the others just to keep them all sort of uniform with each other like that do up here the same thing on that weird like little angle 
And I'm waiting to paint the frame on these windows. This frame is going to be metal by the time I'm done, but I'm waiting because I'm going to get this color all over the freaking place, right? So I want to make sure that I keep things as clean as possible. <laughs> all at the same time, looking as dirty and aged as possible. That's kind of a contradiction in terms, I guess, but there we go. Here, perfect. Over here, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the other side. Oh, running out of my mix. It's okay, because I only got one more panel to do. And like I say, we're slowly gonna build up anyway, so if you do get to the point where it's like, oh, I didn't get too much of that color, it's okay. Again, this is supposed to represent the glare, sort of, on the window. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's it. Next up, next step is just the Caldera Sky by itself. I'm sorry I wasted your time Well, I'm sorry you wasted mine Maybe you will write it Alright, final step for the gradient on the windows. I'm going to use a little bit of this Keldor Sky and mix it in with a little bit of what used to be Ice Blue. I guess now they're calling it Lothern Blue. Damn GW, just stick to some names, will you? <laughs> it's, like, it's like every five years Citadel changes the names of their paints. Anyway, let's get a nice fitty-fitty mixture of this because the, the Lothern is just a little too bright for this gradient. And we want to just keep a gradual sort of thing going. I think it's still a little too bright, but whatever, this is going to be the final step. So once again, just kind of that curve. We want to do it as minimal as possible at this point. Just like that. Same thing on the lights. In case you guys didn't see, I hit it with a little bit of, bit of that mid-blue there in high speed. Front lights, of course. I don't know why, but I like to picture my cars like they're not on for some reason. If we're, maybe, maybe because lighting effects is just a little more difficult. And again, we're trying to get these done quick and dirty. There it is. That's the one. Let's do the other two. We'll see all the sides just like that. Show you like on. HBO. All right, so the backlights, we're just gonna give them a touch of his fist on red. All right, so I ran out of chain mail, but basically I just have to do this little grid on the windows of the copter. So I've got a little bit of silver, just straight silver <laughs> here. And it's a little bit lighter than the chain mail. It probably is a smarter idea to use one that's a little bit darker, actually. Uh, actually, I, I guess in this case it doesn't matter, because I'm going to be hitting these with a black gloss at the end anyway, just to sort of blend in all these abrupt lines in my transition, as well as, of course, the gap, or fill the, well, I want to say the crevices between this silver line and the blue windows. So just be real careful. Only get it where you want it. At this stage, there is no going back. I mean, you can always paint over it, but why cause yourself more work? Take your time, and it's actually less of a pain in the ass than going quickly and having to touch it up later. I like to avoid touch-ups if I can. Sometimes you just don't care, right? In this case, it's a final detail. This is not like, you know, a main color. Like I say, it's just a final detail on here. And, of course, the toy itself is lacking in some detail, especially along the sides here. So uh, I have to almost create this line here. I'm almost making details where there isn't any. And they're killing the music. While that silver dries on my gyrocopter, I'm going to go around and paint the black details on 
my cars, so of course the tires, and uh, in the case of the car here, the little speaker um, that I'm using as that sonic weapon. So, yep, that's all there is to it. I'm just painting the tires, being real careful not to get the hubcaps because I've already painted them the nice rust color and silver color. I don't want to have to touch them up. That's all it is. Alright, so I'm just going to catch a few final details, like the center of the speaker. Usually, as far as I've seen, the center of the speaker is kind of like a metallic dark metallic color so the black is still a little bit wet here I'm just gonna mix in the uh, silver that I already had on my palette hopefully I can get a nice consistent dark silver with this yeah there you go that dark silver sort of thing that's supposed to be in the center of the speaker there I don't know the exact words for it but there it is and then uh, I'm going to take a little bit of what I refer to as lamp black. This is black that would have light hitting it. So I've mixed up a jar of it a while back, and I've just been using it ever since. Basically, guys, this is just black mixed with a little bone. Um, and this just allows me to add lighting effects to black without it looking like gray or another color or something. And even sometimes it is still too gray, I'll even take a little bit of my black and mix it in just to make it a little bit darker. In this case, I just want to add a little bit of a highlight so that speaker doesn't look too flat. So we'll just put a little bit, sort of, upper semicircle there, here, perfect, maybe down here as well, and then Boom, so you kind of get that sort of quartered look with, with the dark black on these two corners and then the lighter gray on these two corners. I don't know if you guys can even really see that in the camera, but that's what's going on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, our cars are pretty much painted. At this point, I am just going to take some non oil gloss. Again, I haven't really found a big use for these gloss washes that Citadel's come out with because. Clearly they can't be used as washes. When I've tried to wash an entire thing, like an entire model with it, like I did with the Null Oil yesterday, um, it just doesn't work. It falls off, it, yeah, it, it, but the good news is because it's a gloss, it makes everything shiny. So in this case, I'm actually just gonna use the fact that it's black tinted to sort of reduce the extreme of the gradient that I've done here, as well as at the same time, make them glossy. Now normally on my original cars, my original team that I built, I, uh, I actually used a gloss varnish, but in this case I'm going to use this gloss wash because I think it does a good job at killing the, like I say, the extremes across the gradient that I've created here. Darkens the window a little bit while at the same time making it kind of shiny and allows the crevices around the outside of the window to really hold that black line oh, got a little bit on the hood just wipe it off your finger if that happens and like a, yeah see and it just creates that black outline around the window that's beautiful because it seeps into all the little crevices there and then like i say it just sort of fades the existing gradient makes it less obvious that it's painted. Cool. So do that there. And all the other windows. Look at this guy here. And that one there. And then I'm just going to take a dab of it and put it on the lights. One light. Two light. Back as well. Boom, boom. Perfect. On the helicopter, this is going to make a massive difference because I've now done that silver on there. I want to, instead of focusing on each window pane like I just did with the, with the buggy there, I am just going to cover this entire front dome with this gloss. And like I say, it'll create nice outlines between the actual glass and the silver that I made here. 
as well. Like I said, it'll add a nice gloss to the window, make it actually shiny, making it look much more like glass. And you see, it's just techniques like this, guys, where you can kind of cover a lot of your crimes with, and at the same time, um, create a detail that wasn't there. Like I say, I'm making it shiny, but at the same time, I'm also creating definition and covering up my lack of paint skill with the gradient on the windows. Beautiful. This is turning out amazing. See, you don't have to be a pro painter to paint, paint pro. There's a lot of cheats in this hobby. And this is one that I recently discovered. And I'm going to use it to my advantage. Perfect. Nice. Just want to make sure I get every square inch so that everything's properly shiny. Bomb. Bomb diddly um. Sweetness. All right. That's just the final car. Get her done quick. All right, the final detail I think I'm going to do on these guys is these jet engines that I put on the back of this guy. Um, basically, I'm just going to take a little yellow and I'm going to basically paint this entire back part here, or at least where it looks like it's venting out with the yellow. I know you're thinking like, what? You're just painting it solid yellow, but you gotta realize guys that in the case especially of fire, it's brighter in the center than it is on the outside. Most people try to do the opposite with fire. So in this case, I'm going to paint, make sure that the yellow paint gets into all the crevices, because that's where I actually want it. And then, uh, and then I'm going to do my other colors on top. Okay, back to the blazing orange. This time I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of it, because I want to dr basically dry brush it on. More than that. <laughs> oh, man. It still didn't look very good, does it? There we go, now we're talking. And I'm just going to hit the raised areas of this engine as well. I want to kind of get the back of the vehicle a little bit too. kind of where it hits here, you know what I mean? A bit there. The engine itself. And then I'm going to do the same thing, which is a little bit of red. I am not even cleaning my brush, nor am I taking the orange off the palette. I actually want it to mix a slight bit, so I'm going to get some red on here and just very lightly hit it with the red. Very, very lightly, because I don't want to cover up my orange or my yellow. Perfect. And then on the actual back here, I almost want to do the opposite of what I did with the actual engine. So you can see here that the yellow is in the crevices, right? And then the orange and red are on the raised areas. Now on the back here, I'm just trying to show like a little bit of fire kind of hitting the corners. So I'm actually going to have to put a little bit of yellow back on there. Again, I'm not caring too much if I mix a little bit with the red and orange. In fact, it's probably better I do it that way anyway. Just to create a sort of gradient. Need more yellow than that. Mm. Right, let me 
make sure I get all the red and orange out of this brush actually for the most part because it's killing my yellow. There we go. That's what I want. That sort of gradient. final yellow highlight there just to make it look like it's actually fire hitting it and it's not exactly the best but it's not exactly the worst I am totally cool with that I love how that looks simple quick easy that's the way I like to do things there's our crew so there's the Michigan team guys I am excited to see what a gyrocopter does in the game so hopefully we'll be able to get these onto the board very soon um, now that I've got a couple of teams, uh, but we're going to keep going with this playlist, guys. I'm going to do every single um, team that Glenn has suggested in his blog, built as close as I possibly can to what he has suggested in his blog. So that's what we're doing. So look out for future videos along these lines. We're going to be doing every sponsor, so if I haven't done your favorite sponsor yet, comment below which one do you want to see next, because I'll do them all eventually. It's just a matter of when and in what order I do them. So if you want to see a specific build, comment below. Also, if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. It goes a long way to help us and the comments help too. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. That way you get to see all the cool Gaslands content we come out with in the future, as well as all the other cool stuff we do. We do battle reports for multiple game systems, we do hobby tutorials, painting tutorials, um, fluff videos, so much stuff, so much stuff. We're always doing stuff, and subscribing is a big way to not miss out on that stuff, especially if you hit that little bell. But at the very least, guys, like and comment, share these videos with your friends, because we love Gaslands, and we love the Gaslands community that has come at us since we've been doing Gaslands videos. You guys are awesome, and I love being part of the Gaslands community now. Um, but also on top of that, if you guys want to help support the channel, check out our Spreadshirt page where you can get one of these sweet t-shirts. Or even check out our Patreon campaign. That is the number one way we reap back any expenses for this project. And basically allows us to keep the channel going. And the more you guys help us out, the better our content will get. And the more of it we'll be able to put out. So basically, you want to help us out buy a t-shirt, check out our Patreon, it's all in the description below. Comment, like, share, and we'll see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.